Hello, welcome to Let's Program with Sientier. We are on part five of the timeline program. And last time we got to this state where I can like move stuff around. And if I want to, I can add a split timeline. And stuff was not horribly breaking. And you'll notice that this is like nestled in between those. But if it goes over there, it's like, yeah. Um, the exact order that these things are going to be in is just going to be kind of whichever one's encountered first because we don't have any sort of more micro data to arrange them by. So um, there's a lot of little bits of functionality that I'd like to add to this. Uh, so like, let's just make sure that this is... Uh, I'm going to call this thing Bob. And if I go over here, it's not there. Let's just call this a timeline. Um, oh, now we've got Bob T. Why do we have Bob T? Did I add a T to that? Uh, okay, I don't know. I had a split timeline off of that. Then this timeline has its own split timeline, which is unnamed over there. Um, timeline Junior. Uh, and I can add a couple of standard events to this. Name them Jill and Jane because names are cool. Um, okay, and then I come up here and we've got Bob and we've got this timeline. Um, cool. So, there's a couple of pieces of functionality that I really want to be able to have. So, those pieces of functionality are, because uh, it looks like split timelines are working, uh, I want to figure out what's going on there, but two of the big pieces of functionality that I want to have, besides saving and loading, obviously, because I really want to be able to save and load my information that I make with this uh, handy-dandy tool, is uh, we and resize it, and that, that's all honky-dory too, uh, which is really cool. So, one of the important pieces of information that I need to add to this is um, I want to add the ability to see split timelines with the date being offset, right? Because this timeline has information about when this timeline begins, right? This timeline begins when it splits off here at date three. Uh, and this timeline splits off of this timeline at date one off of date three, so this should have four added to all of its dates, maybe, if I want to display it that way. So, the, excuse me, the uh, method for, for doing that that I want to do is I want to add some sort of option. Ah, uh, water break. Remember, folks, stay hydrated. So, uh, let's, let's go ahead and bump this one to 12. Uh, it always bings at you when you hit enter. It's just a way of the, the thing works. It's a little obnoxious, but... So I want to add that mode. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is I want to add the ability to kind of make a uh, high-level view of the timeline, as it were. So that way you can evaluate the timeline visually, because this is, while functional and quite useful, also exceedingly bulky. As you might have noticed, these are fairly large controls. They take up a bunch of space. Um... And while this works for editing, if you kind of want to get an, an overall, like, at-a-glance view, it doesn't work as great just because it takes up a lot of space. So um, there's a couple of ways that I want to approach doing that. Uh, and I think I'm going to make use of our little blank guy here uh, for both of those things. So let's go over here. Here's our blank guy. And... Uh, I'm going to name this, ready for it, edit. Okay, so right here I want to add um, our toggle for display relative, uh, let's, let's go ahead and put a D on that, display relative dates for split timelines. Okay, so that's very bulky. Um, by default, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off. But uh, what that's going to do... Drink some water here. What that's going to do is this is going to, when I set it up, when you turn it on, it's going to display relative dates for split timelines, exactly what it says. So um, let's see. So there's a couple of other options that I want to add, which is... Uh, I'm going to call these um, 
timeline overview. And timeline overview is going to have this and all. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put T on that. So I want to add some shortcuts for these because I think that would be very helpful. So let's go ahead and go to shortcut keys and make, hmm, what should I make display relative dates are? How about uh, control R? That seems pretty good for uh, that. So when you hit control R on your keyboard, it'll automatically use it. Uh, timeline overview. Um, I like control T for this and uh, let's do actually control shift T for all because uh, and I'm not sure which one's going to be more useful but I want to make them very similar because they're doing a very similar operation and one of the things you want to do is you want to make your shortcut keys actually rememberable rememberable memorizable something you can remember um, because if you don't what you're prone to run into is not remembering what they are and then they're not useless because you always have to just go like now what was that again and then you go over to it so control t for like timeline oh this, let's look at this one control shift t for let's look at all of them um so what i intend for this to do then is bring up very similar things just one is you know displays all of the branching timelines as well all being all branching timelines as well um so let's see. Let's make this guy work first. So remember how I have a data state, and I'm going to need to do a lot more to this to get this exactly where I want it, because it's going to need to look at all sorts of things. Uh, remember, this is the sort of thing, and, and I forgot about it, but this is the sort of thing that can really bite you on the round. So I want, um, let's see, static inter internal. Um, bool relative wow that's not at all how you do this um relative timelines okay so set does a thing and get just does a lot less Okay, uh, static private pool relative timelines toggle equals uh, false get. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to return relative timelines toggles and set is going to, so it's going to set relative timeline toggles equals true. But then what I want here is I want an internal event. Uh, is there a Boolean event? No. Event handler. Um, relative timelines toggled. Um, and that needs to be static because this is a static class. So then if relative timelines toggled uh, does not equal null. Again, it tells me this is a redundant check, but it makes me feel a lot more comfortable uh, to not have it be that. So, um, what this is going to do is when I go over to our timeline date control and I view its code, um, so there's a couple things that I want to add here. I want to go, um, data state dot relative timelines toggled. Oop. Yeah, that name's fine. And then some stuff. Then I want to also add, um, this. And I want to go basically just change this by a line. Because what I want to do is I want to make sure that's not getting uh, hung around there and disposing something as happens when it gets cleaned up. 
because this thing shouldn't be listening for those changes being made if it gets deleted. Uh, eventually, I do want to also add the ability to delete events from the timeline, but that's going to be a concern for a later time. So, some stuff. What is this stuff going to be? So, I want to take... Um, okay, is that owning date? What I want to do here is this needs to have, okay. Okay. So I'm gonna need to have some information in this in order to be able to process this. So you'll notice that right now I don't have any way of determining, um, and it's right here that I need to change it to. I don't have, not up here, a way of determining what the um, date is, right? Um, so there's a couple of notable things. I don't need to call the stuff in here if I'm changing that toggle. So let's go ahead and do bool toggle changing. Uh, Relative dates toggle changing is false. And then if I go up here and I just do this, if this is happening, return, then this function will uh, exit out of the function if we're changing the relative dates. Uh, relative, the relative date display. Um, and then this should be uh, just like update information. So that's what that's doing. So then I take our handy dandy toggle here and I set it to true and then I set it to false when I'm done. Change the display. Okay. So, how do I want to set this up? I th think I have owning date. So if I set timeline dates to have uh, some way of knowing what their starting is. So I can hook that up by going in here and adding um, a public timeline date parent, which is by default null. Okay. So then I go over to, I make a split timeline. Actually, right here, add event. So right here, this is a spot where things are really convenient. Um, okay, I need to figure out how to, the timeline by default does not have, okay, I'm thinking through this here. Um, Timeline. Right. I'm just making these things public because I'm being lazy. Um, you might want to actually make them private, but so I want to go if parent equal null what dot uh, date dot parent equals parent dot date. Okay. I think that is what I want. Um, that. Um, okay, and then when I go to making a split timeline, you code split timeline. 
Um, right here, I should be able to just go public split timeline. Um, timeline dot parent equal this. Okay, I think this should all hook up. Make sure it builds. No, it doesn't build. It doesn't build because of this. Again, I brought this problem on myself by naming something timeline and the default namespace is timeline, which is obnoxious, but I'm not changing it. Okay, so now I can go. I've lost my control because I've done so many things that moved tabs around. Um, okay, doing fine on time. So now we can go. Um, if you know what, let's let's go ahead and uh, leave that comment there. So turn off updating position and such. How you spell such? Turn updating back on. So what I need to do here is if um, owning date, actually, I should just go if owning date is equal to null, turn. And then actually, OK, so I'm going to do this. This is going to be much more useful for me to do. So. I'm going to make a uh, thing here. Um, I'm going to make a function for handling this particular operation. Private void um, toggle relative date mode. Relative uh, should be a bool relative. Um, I'm just going to call this relative on. So let's go toggle relative date mode. Um, and then this is going to be data state dot uh, relative timelines. Yay. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. OK, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to come down here and go uh, toggle relative date mode. Um, data state dot relative timelines. And I guess I could have just made it go off of data state dot relative timelines because it's always going to be that, but I did not. So, oh well. Water break. Okay. So, there's a very important piece of information. If owning date, okay, this is after owning date, so that's good. That's where that needs to be. Um, and realistically, this should actually be, uh, most of this should actually be in there. So I'm just going to move this down here. And friends and Googles, let's go ahead and move this pool down here too. OK, so if owning date equal to null, or owning date dot parent is equal to null. So something that's really important to know is that there's a uh, an important concept in programming with uh, logic operators. So this is a logical operator. This is this means or. Um, so either if owning date is null or its parent is null, then we just don't do anything, right? Because there's there's nothing to do if we don't have a date. Excuse me. Or if our date doesn't have a parent from which to draw information from about how relative it should be. And uh, what we then need to do here, oh boy, yeah, this is going to be complicated. So what we then need to do here is say, OK, um, uh, sorry, my brain is getting caught up in the fact that I'm going to need to uh, listen for our parent changing its value. But uh, there's an idea called short circuiting 
if this is null, then it's like, well, this whole Boolean is true. If this one's true, then we just go to the return. We don't even check this one, which is good, because if that was null, then this check would fail, because it couldn't reach it. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out uh, while I was in here. So I need to uh, add a thing listening to the parent for if it's, no. Right, it's its value changes, so the relative display can updated in relative mode. Okay, so if owning date, uh, dot, I already did that. Dot parent. Okay, what am I setting? Um, basically, I'm gonna go raw date dot. Um. Okay. Raw date. Okay, let's start this way. Um, value equals owning date dot raw value plus owning date dot parent dot raw. Ooh, okay, so I'm gonna need to make a um a function here. So I'm just gonna make a um, int um rental date sum. Um, and I'm just gonna make it a uh, timeline date date. And then parental date sum owning date. So <clears throat> what this does is if date dot parent is equal to null, return zero. Else return. Uh, so this is something called a recursive function where it's going to call itself. Rental date sum date dot parent, and I can go over here and go um, date dot parent dot raw value plus this function on itself. So what this is going to do is this is going to look at all of its parents and add up all those dates. But if we don't have a parent, then it doesn't add anymore. Um, so that's going to be really important. So I'm going to actually capture it uh, in int um, parental date sum uh, parental date sum equals parental parental date sum uh, owning date. Um, make that lowercase because that makes some different variables. I know it's a little bit confusing. It's probably about programming practice. I don't care because it's the same friggin' piece of information. Um, and the reason why I'm capturing that is because I need to go raw date dot minimum equals parental sum. Because the we need to make the minimum the sum of the parent date because that would be plus zero, right? So if our own date was at zero, then that's what the minimum would become. Uh, so this right here is if relative on is true, then we do this. Otherwise, we need to turn it off, and that's going to require us to just set uh, raw date dot minimum equals zero and raw date dot value equals owning date dot raw value. Uh, AKF, format everything. Yeah, okay. So this should um, more or less do what I want it to do with regards to that. So now what I need to do is um, add a thing for listening to its, my parent to see if its value changed. Which is, you know, important. Um, 
I need to figure out how I want to handle that. So I can just listen for the date changed, right? But I need to... Um, uh, have... Let's do it this way, actually. Um... So what I'm doing here is I'm making a function that will say uh, if date uh, if data state dot relative timelines um, and then toggle relative date mode relative is true. Aha. Did use something different. So what I'm planning on doing is when I make um, this event stuff, it should. I want to hook this up to the uh, parents thing. So let's see if I can brain my way around getting this set up. Um, should be in here. Um, so when this timeline event is changed, okay, I think it's in timeline control actually that I need to do right here. So, um, I need to go if timeline dot. Parent does not equal line dot, dot. No, no, it's not here. It's not here at all. I have information I need form one might. This is a bit tricky because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pass a bunch of information around um, and figuring out the best way to hook everything together is where I run into the problem. So this actually, this bit can be really simply done. This is uh data state dot relative timelines equals not data state dot relative timelines. So this is just a very simple way of running a toggle. Um and then uh display relative blah blah blah, blah this gigantic thing dot checked equals data state dot relative timelines. So this is going to, this is the auto-generated name for that particular um, control because I gave it a really long name uh, and then it suffixed what type of thing it is. But that's the um, the actual thing. So this will put a check mark next to it when this mode is on and uh, remove the check mark when it's off. And I default it to being off. So now the big thing is hooking it up so that way it can see its proper parent split timeline control. So Ooh boy. Um both of these call add events. The so timeline control has access to its parent Purposes of, right? How do I have this set up? Everything has access to its parent. Sorry, I'm thinking through. I need to be able to go. Um, okay, so event control base is going to need a public. Uh, Timeline date control. It's going to need to be an. I don't know if it needs to be. It probably needs to be an internal virtual whatever. Is there a way of making this like you have to implement it? 
I can't just make this abstract, can I? I'm not sure it likes abstract and things that aren't explicitly stated to be abstract. Eternal. What's exploding? What is exploding and why have I exploded? I didn't give this a name. Date control. Okay. And that's why it was exploding. Okay. So what I need to do now is I need to go into these guys right here. You need to override date control turn date and let's see. I want to uh, am a little over time of because I want to keep this about half an hour. I'm a little over that, but. Whoa, how did it get to, oh. I already had return, so I was like, you must not mean return anymore, right? Because you already have that. Okay, so then when I go to, so this is where programming gets real messy and kind of hacky. So I need to go, um, ECB dot, uh, Let's see. Oh, I need to go to its parent. Oh boy. Okay, so this is getting really complicated and my brains are shorting out. So, timeline control. I need, if it has a parent, I need the split control. The timeline control. Okay. Timelines have the split timeline parent. That does not get me the actual control that was made for it. I could rework how get control works. No, that's complicated. Um. Let's see. Um, okay, so the simplest solution to this would be to go to timeline control, set up a um, internal uh, timeline date control. Um, Parent time control equals null, and then go to yaw and go if parent parent uh, time control does not equal null, um, parent time control dot date changed plus equals. Uh, ecb dot date control dot uh, update date from parent change. Think is how that needs to be set up, and then it probably would behoove me go ecb dot disposed and go. Um, I need a event controls dot event control base um, sender dot up uh, no date dot con uh, date control dot update from law and go um, current time control dot date changed minus equals to remove that so it stops listening 
in the case of that one thing's deleted. This will just be a, an extra long episode because I do kind of want to get this thing set up for you guys today because it's kind of a big deal. Um, okay, so what's the next step? That Was that the next step? Was that the last step? I feel like I needed to hook something up. I needed to hook something up over here. So I need to go TLC dot parent time control equals ST dot uh, eight. No, not STC dot date control. Okay. Let's see if I did that right. This is part of programming. Split timeline. Let's add an event. Let's make this happen at three. Now this says three, I can bring it up to seven, I turn it off, and now it goes to 10. That doesn't make any sense. 11, okay, so I've clearly got some stuff borked. Okay, cool. So what I found is I have not done this quite correctly, but uh, something's working. So let's see if I can quickly figure out why this is not working. Relative is on. Then we do that, otherwise I'm going to zero and this becomes zero. Okay, so why is this not working? Um, split timeline, standard event, let's put this at three. Okay. So you can see that that's turned on. This is now at three. Turn that off. Wait. Okay, that's not turning off properly. Fascinating. Okay, so the problem must be over here. That would be why. Always make sure you're setting things to the information that's supposed to be set to. And here, don't do stupid stuff like that. Okay. Now when I go, that becomes two, back to zero. I can bring this up to like seven. And okay. I see. Uh, okay, so that's off. If I bump this up to three, this should. Okay, so that's on, okay, that's good. Four, this should be 15 now. If I bring this all the way down to four. Okay. Control R is a little finicky. It does go to four, and if I bring this up to seven, and I turn, oh, that's, if I make that eight, oh. Oh, I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Ha ha, I think I know what's going on. Um, so, what I need to do is when I'm changing the value right here. Right here is where the problem is. So, if that is not binding state dot relative timelines, do one thing else do the other. So when I'm changing it, I need to take into account my relative timeline state. And I forgot to do this. So it's effectively this minus um, uh, that some parental, yeah, this thing, uh, owning date. Okay, so let's just double check this again, make this at like Three at a standard event to this. Make this at like four. That jumps to seven, back down to four. Seven, let's bump that eight, back down to five. Cool. Looks like I've got it working. Uh, hope you were able to stick with me through this long episode, but I'm super excited to get the relative display going. Um, I might want something that makes it a little bit more obvious the display's relative. Uh, let's just add another space. Whoop, okay, so it explodes on split timelines for reasons that I do not yet know. Um, 
Okay, so that lets me find another spot where I need to make sure that this has, um, this right here needs to probably be set right here. And I might as well move that here and then do that there. Okay, so that should hopefully fix that particular bug. Yeah. Um, turn relative mode on and add another split timeline here. That starts at four. And if I add a standard event, that starts at four because this is two. And then that's um, two. And then this is at zero. So it's very complicated. So that's four without it on, and that's 10 otherwise, because this is two, two, and two. So they each add two to it. So that's a big complicated mess. Um, like I said, I think I want to add some sort of display uh, to indicate that things are in relative mode. That's something that I'll look to doing next time. Uh, for now, I feel like I've got this working, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and call it. So thank you, everyone, for watching, and take care. Bye-bye.